What's going on YouTube? Day back again and guess what? The mailman came today. He had a package from USA Gundam Store. And what's in that package? Well, I am super stoked to show you. And uh, yeah, as soon as I heard that this was announced, I threw the money down, had to get it. And uh, so without further ado, let's get into it. All right, boys and girls, here we are taking a look at the perfect grade Gundam Exia. This is the Celestial Bean Mobile Suit GN001. Man, I am super stoked to get this. I love the box art on here. And I will be honest with you, about 60 seconds after recording this, I will be cutting this all out and throwing the rest in the trash. This, of course, is part of the Gunpla Evolution Project. And this is lighting model, however you want to end up saying it. It has a foil pearlescent holographic look to it and I love how this just pops out it's really crisp a nice 3d uh, render of the Exia yeah this is going on the wall no doubt taking a look at the top just says perfect grade Gundam Exia same foil nice straight on shot of the Exia is kind of a uh, Obscured there with all the stickers and your official bluefin sticker on one side you do have the Exia in Trans Am mode Gunpla Evolution, Perfect Grade Gundam Exia. Other side, you just have the Celestial Being emblem on there. Taking a look at the shot of the back of the box itself, you of course over here have some action poses. Down here you have all the gimmicks and all the accessories that come with it. Your multitude of hands. I'm really glad that they included fixed pose hands for the weapons, things like that. You have the GN Drive over here. You have information about the lighting unit itself, about the transformation from regular all the way into Trans Am mode, and then how it looks with just the frame. I'm really curious how this ends up looking. I have seen video of most of them being in Japanese or Korean. I mean, it looks great as it is on a film. So I'm really curious why it looks like in person. Another thing I'm curious about is anyone that knows me knows this will be a biased review because I have much love for this mobile suit and this series, even though many people just absolutely hate uh, the 00 series. I don't know. For some reason, I can really relate to it and um, the series and the morals behind the story. That's that's my main thing. But this is a high mobility suit and it looks like they've kind of bulked it up. I mean, the arms look kind of bulky. The chest looks a little bulkier. The legs look bulkier. So we will have to see when this is all done up but it just looks like they kind of beefed it up just in that central uh, section right about there and then they do have a shot of the feet here the feet are really small but then again this is a high mobility it is uh, more of an air and base unit instead of like a ground unit so we'll have to see though this is going to end up being on the stand you know, to be able to light it and everything. So I doubt it's going to have to rely on a small ankles and those small feet to hold up its proportions. All right, guys, if you stick around here in a little bit, uh, we're going to pop open the box itself. I'm going to show you what comes in the box and then we're going to go over the instructions and all the runners in the usual fashion. All right, here we are taking a look at the box itself and the tray. Uh, you have, of course, all the runners in the baggies and I hate the baggy sound. I hate watching reviewers and they're all and shaking the bags. Nothing irritates me more. So I won't be doing that to you guys. So there are a couple I want to take a look at like uh, these and uh, they are in a pearlescent blue. Uh, they're translucent. They are kind of flexible. And uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how these uh, transfer light and everything. Up over here, they look like they have plenty of space to stick more stuff. So I don't know, maybe future uh, renditions when they add stuff. I'm really hoping that they do uh, Avalanche. I doubt they will because that will be really expensive, but it would be cool to see. I might get a regular version without the lights and do the repair version and customize it. We will have to see, I think in March, uh, they're going to come out with the repair version add-on parts and we'll see how those look. I haven't been super impressed with the pictures that I've seen so far. Uh, up over here, you have a box with the Exia LED unit. Uh, up underneath that, you have runners, runners, more runners. You get the instruction booklet, which is down in here. Now, I have heard people complain that they didn't include water slides, though you know there will probably be in the premium Bandai shop uh, some water slides later on, but we will end up seeing. Here's the instructions. We'll go over those here shortly. This is a nice, big, thick handbook, too. Uh, I think it's running... How many pages have we got? Come on, guys. Come on. Uh, 55... 
probably about 60 pages. And I think I heard that there's about 64 runners. All right, guys. So without further ado, I'm going to jump down to the table. Actually, first, I'm going to unwrap everything, put them in order, then jump down to the table. We'll go over the instruction manual, all the runners, and then uh, give you my first impressions. So uh, hang out. I'll be right back. All right, boys and girls, here we are. And I'm going to try and get through this as quickly as possible because, well, we have a lot of stuff to look at. And I don't want this to be like a 45 minute video. So here we have the instruction manual for the Perfect Grade Exia. Taking a look at the cover art, same as the, on the box. And I really, I do, I really, really like this. Um, if I can find a poster like this, I'm going to get that instead. Taking a look at the inside of the cover, you have some more great CGI artwork. You have the explanation of the story, both in Japanese and English. If you want to pause that to read that, I'll give you guys a chance. Moving on to these pages, you have some more information about Gundam that became the symbol of military intervention, both in Japanese and English. And I really appreciate the fact that they're putting uh, English uh, in here with it. And I'm excited to see, you know, just how much mobility that this has. Um, I know like the master grades and the others, they have a lot of great mobility. This is one pose that I want to try and pull off on the stand for sure. Getting into the meat of things, we start going over the runners here. And like I said, I think there's like 46 or so. I didn't count them when I lined them all up. But you get the runners for the base, all the rest of the runners, and then stickers. Some more runners. Some more runners. You get the LED unit layout here. And I'm not sure. I'll have to look. But it looks like it may come with one of the handy dandy tools. Taking a look at pages 10 and 11. Continuation on explaining how to put the batteries into the LED set how to lay out for the LEDs, um, how to work the LED set, and just more on that stuff. Now, one thing that I do want to try and see if I can do is uh, set up a either USB or a um, an actual electrical source, and that way not having to uh, switch out the batteries. You get the assembly index, and this looks a little bit different than they've been doing. Um, you get the breakdown of the weapons, the base, the frame um, and then the armor and then showing you how to open the hatches uh, showing you that you need tweezers and nippers for plastic showing you the proper way to nip everything out and starting off with the build over here you start off with the base and I'm assuming with the regular version it's going to be the same instruction booklet you're just like with the unicorns you're just going to omit uh, the wiring sections and how to run the wiring Pages 14 and 15, continuation of the base. 16, 17. Uh, 16 is going to be uh, finalization of putting the base together. And 17 is going to be the assembly of the chest. 18, continuation of the chest frame. And 19, continuation of the chest frame. And it looks like there's going to be a lot of little finagling going on with wiring. So this is probably why um, a lot of people are speculating that they may not come out with a, a separate wiring set because that's going to make it really tricky. I mean, you're going to have to tear apart your, literally the whole model kit to be able to try and get the wiring in there. Um, with the unicorn, that was possible. With this, uh, just looking at it so far, this is going to be pretty much impossible to um, take it completely apart to put the wiring set in. 20 and 21, continuation of uh, the chest unit. Looks like you're adding on the waist unit over here. Now, one thing I can tell you right now that I do find interesting is instead of like all the other kits where they have basically the layout of the frame and then adding on the armor parts and you move on to the next section, this is literally you build the frame and then you're going to add on the armor sections. So that's actually going to make it a lot easier for me uh, reviewing it and showing you guys instead of having to build up the whole thing, pull off armor pieces, remember where they all go. So uh, actually, good job. A 24, 25 continuation of the legs. And actually this looks like the, on 25, the second half looks like the um, beginning of building the GN drive. And that was another thing that I found kind of interesting and I'm wondering how that ends up working. Um, the model kit will not light up without the GN drive in there. And I've seen contact points 
And I'm kind of curious how that ends up working. Kind of seems like you can do the GN drive separately onto the base and you can light it up, but it, the unit and uh, the GN drive will not light up together it, on the base. So it's kind of interesting how they have the circuitry worked out. Continuing on, you get the beginnings and build on the arms. 28, 29, continuation of the arms. 30 and 31 is going to be the arms, the hands, and the head. And that was another thing I'm kind of interested about is the way that they have this set up. The head piece, like the head crest and the eyes will stay green where the head crest on the top will actually be either blue or it'll turn red without affecting the eyes. So I'm kind of curious how that ends up working too. Uh, I think just in theory, they did a really good job on this. Um, you have the insertion of the GN drive, turn on the power connectors to make sure everything is working. And then you start on um, page 33 is going to be start adding on armor pieces for the chest and torso. 34, 35 additional add-on pieces for the chest, the waist, beginning of the legs. 36, 37, just more of that adding on armor pieces for the legs. 38, 39 uh, looks like the lower part of the legs and adding on the pieces for the feet and then moving on to the arms. 40 and 41 is a continuation on the arms and then building the shoulder units. 42 is finalization of adding on the armor pieces for the head and then you start in on the weapons. You got all the GN blades, uh, the saber handles, and the shield. So just continuation on the shields and those parts. And I have noticed uh, notations on a lot of pieces that there is a lot of undergating on here. So just make sure and trim those points as you go along. You get the GN blade um, and then adding on the shield part for it, putting together the GN beam saber handles and the beam daggers where they end up going on the back and let's see here you get the gn short blade the gn long blade um let's see here showing you how to put the weapons in the hand and be able to manipulate that around i know there are some switch gimmicks going on to lock things into place showing you the gimmick for being able to open up the gn shield how to open the cockpit hatch Antenna opens and closes, uh, opening the hatches throughout the body. I guess the, what you would call ear pieces slide back. Um, the armor pieces that are on the waist section open up on the legs, lower legs, uh, on the shoulders and on the forearms. Moving on to page 52, showing you more sections on how um, pieces move. This is interesting. I saw someone do it on another video of how you can unlock the waist section and basically almost have him double over. Uh, I think that is kind of interesting. We'll have to see that in, um, in use. Showing you how to open up all the hatches on the GN drive. Uh, mounting to the base, connecting the connection points, um, attaching the GN drive to the separately to the uh, to the base and then putting the cap over the hole pages of 54 and 55 is showing you how to put um, all the accessories in the base now I know with the unicorn you can put all the things on the base but I really like the idea that you can put all the accessories that you're not using if you're doing for transport if you paint this up for a show something like that where you can actually store all the pieces on the underside of the base and uh, I think that makes a lot of sense so thank you for thinking of that all right moving on to the final pages you of course get some shots with high glare um, of both the just the frame and then with the armor on you get some bio on the rest of the celestial being um, man if they made the rest of these just make them in master grade you don't even guys even have to make them in perfect grade just make them in master grade guys I mean the best we have is some high grade one uh, 100s and as it is those are the same price as like master grade so come on you can do it on the final pages over here you actually have a color guide which are in mr color you get placement of all the decals and then you get the back side of the manual 
taking a look here real quick here are the decals and you know I have to say I was really skeptical I will put these on for review purposes and it'll sit on the shelf for a while but if you see they're actually matte they're not shiny um, so I actually like that usually stickers are very like obvious uh, and I like the fact, the fact that they did these in um, in the mat on there. It gives it more of a like a dry transfer, though they're still going to be obvious on the kit. And last but not least, you get a foil set. Um, and I'm not sure how these end up getting used. If you have the, I think maybe these get omitted, uh, but get used if you have the non-lighting version. So we'll have to see on that. I think uh, some of these others are more intended for the non-lighting version as well another thing i'm wondering about is how they're going to do on the nine uh non-lighting version for the gn drive whether maybe it's going to be a different kind of gn drive where you can just stick in one of the single led units on there i don't know we're going to have to see i haven't seen a single person unbox one of those yet um everybody's been getting the lighting version so we'll have to see all right, the first thing that I'm going to go over with is the LED unit box. All right, the first thing we're going to go over is the LED unit uh, setup. Um, Bandai, made in China. All right, so let's see here. Let's slide this open, slide everything out. Okay, so you do get one of these old tools. It is in black. I have several of these in uh, gray. So, uh, yeah. You get the actual LED unit itself. We'll go over more detail when I do the build on this. You get a bunch of different baggies and I'm not sure which ones go to which. Uh, I know this one's for the GN drive. And this was what I was talking about for the controls. Um, it will not light the rest of the unit if this is not plugged into Exia. Um, and you get a bunch of LEDs. So, and this is the main torso one. Um, doesn't look that different actually from the one that came with uh, the unicorn. Looks really similar actually. All right, getting back to the look that you guys know and love. Got the wooden block back. This is runner 1A. You have kind of a, a creamish mustard color over here on the yellow. You get this uh, violet blue on here. You get, uh, this is almost a violet color. Uh, on this section over here and then a nice red over here runner a2 is going to be a continuation of a lot of those parts of the duplicate sides except for what was for the face parts up here runner b1 this is going to be in a clear green so you have gn part drives you have head crest parts and the way that i've taken the instructions and seen a couple of the builds is these are actually layered there's actually several layers that go on top of each other to get the effect so um, it's going to be interesting to see how that ends up going together but 2017 made in japan now runner b2 this is in a smoky gray clear so this is going to probably be the second layer that ends up going on uh, on the kit and this is in a like a flexible um, almost a poly style material runner c so this is going to be for a lot of those pieces like uh, for the waist uh, the arms things like that that you get that light transfer through and this is in a kind of a pearlescent blue and again this is that uh, poly material so it's uh, it is flexible um, I think this is going to be for the chest unit. This is going to be for the head up here. Um, I can see some waist parts and then some other like leg bits on here. Now runner D, this is in a what I would call a soft gray or neutral gray. Uh, I really like this color a lot and this is going to be some of the accent pieces. Um, I think this is going to be for the, the gun. These look like chest pieces over here, uh, waist section. Uh, here's the cockpit seat over here runner e1 this is in a light gray or off-white however you want to end up putting that but i see it as a light gray and uh, so you get probably for the knees over here 
um, just odd bits and bits. Um, I recognize like some wrist pieces, some things like that. This is going to be for the head up here. Runner E2 is going to be a continuation just of the duplicate parts. Runner F is a continuation of this color. You've got the V fin up here. Um, one of the things is instead of how they normally end up doing it, where you just have one joint here and the others are free, there's actually under gating on here for that triple hold, which I actually, I appreciate because of the fact that it keeps this from, you know, kind of being moved around and torqued in the packaging. You have GN drive pieces over here. You have back of hands over here. Um, you have the side of the head over here. This actually looks kind of bigger than I was expecting it to. Um, it looks like it's actually going to be bigger looking up on the shelf than, um, than the unicorn. Uh, which is kind of surprising because Unicorn is just a monster. Runner G is going to be in a dark gray. And uh, here we have a GN parts over here, um, or the GN drive parts inside of the head looks like. You have uh, what looks like the inner frame for the GN drive. H is going to be in this fantastic blue, uh, a purplish blue color. Um, the, the, the color scheme that they've gone with this is not traditional, like your blue, yellow, so forth. It's, I really like it. Um, like I said, this is more of a, a purple tone, um, in the blue scale. So you get the back of where the GN drive plugs in, you get uh, for the chest vents, um, shoulder bits over here. Okay. On runner eye, this is going to be frame parts. This is in that typical, like brownish gray that they've been using for all the frames. And uh, this is gonna be an ABS and there are a lot of frame parts, you know, which is kind of surprising seeing how Axia is pretty much all armor and minimal frame. Runner J, I did end up finding this piece loose in the package over here. Um, looks like waist unit right here, some skirt pieces, and I'm not sure what these joints go to yet. Runner K, you get two of, again, in that brown gray. Uh, looks to be pr uh, probably hip joints over here, shoulder, um, just more odds and ends and little moving pieces. L, there's two of. These are actually in white. And uh, so you have armor pieces, you have handles for beam sabers, which just look uh, just crazy large. Um, back of the hands. And if you look here, there's actually different... Um, positions for the back of the hands so you have just regular hands and then i'm assuming maybe these are for the fist hands so that it's more like this it's they're not all the same which i actually like that runner m you actually get two of uh still the same color you get shoulder parts over here you get a lot of little pieces that get added on um again more little movable pieces these looks actually look like to be fingers up here or finger joints um and just more odds and ends runner in you get one of still a continuation of that color more frame parts uh, you do get chunks of hands you get more of the fixed pose hands like you get the fist uh, fingers over here you get the open palm uh, action palms over here you actually get gun holding or weapon holding hands over here which I think is great for being able to hold things like uh, the beam, beam sabers and stuff like that and the GN blades without it collapsing over time. And just give you a view on the backside of those hands themselves. Runner O, you get two of, you get leg armors over here. You get, um, pretty sure these go over the, the hip pieces that hold the GN blades. Um, just mostly leg armors on here. This looks to be a knee over here. All right, P1, and um, this looks to be in a dark gray, and uh, these are gonna be leg uh, pieces over here, just internal frames, more internal frame stuff on this. P2 is just going to be a runner of duplicates of some of those parts. Q, there's gonna be two of, um, and there's a couple of oddball spaces up here that there's no numbers to them, but it's just weird that there's odd open spaces on here. I'm not used to that with Bandai, um, but you get little piston pieces and more detailing stuff. So there's going to be a lot of moving bits on this. Runner R is going to be the beam sabers and you actually get brand new beam sabers with this. Um, 
Let's see, PG-160, 2017, yeah. So these are actually brand new beam sabers all together. You have long, then you have the beam daggers. Um, they're a little, they're not scuffed up. It's just the way that they're cast on here. But uh, it's nice to see new blades and not the same ones rehashed year after year. And this is the runner that I found most interesting out of all. And this one is the only poly caps that there are for the kit. You have these two big ones, which I'm going to assume maybe for the hips or something like that, uh, weight bearing, but you get these two and then there's just a handful on here. So I find that really interesting that these are the only poly caps for the whole kit. All right. So getting into this, you did have a snap off over here as I was taking it out of the packages, but you have runner WA, which is going to be that uh, grayish brown for shield bits for, uh, let's see, this appears to be the handle for the the gun the shield gun and the GN blade frame WB1 is going to be more of the frame parts for some of the weapons like the GN blades uh, for the shield things like that WB2 is just going to be the duplicates that are needed WC is going to be again in that uh, purple hue blue this is going to be for, uh, I think this is for the shield, and then this is going to be for the other shield, and uh, for the handles of the GN blades, and then for the, or the, yeah, the GN blades, and then the GN sword. WE1 is going to be in a, a stark white, and this is going to be accessories for both the shields and the blades. WE2 is going to be some duplicates for those same things. WF1 is going to be, this is in a fluorescent green clear. This is going to be for the GN blade and the GN shield, I believe, for when it opens up. Whew, I'm getting winded, guys. All right, WD, this is going to be the blades for um, the GN sword, some... Let's see, some other bits that are on here. I think these are for the GN blades and the GN sword. So yeah, and this seems to be in um, that coated, that matte silver coating, and it actually looks really good. I like this a lot better than going for a chrome. All right, and I have to show this to you guys because this is going to make you laugh. So WB1 is going to be a large scale Setsuna, which judging for the, from the size of the pieces, they're expecting this to be about 160th scale. This actually looks to be about one, bigger than 160th, but we'll give it the, the benefit of the doubt. WA1 is supposed to be Setsuna sitting for inside. Look how small he is. But wait, it gets better. This, minus the cat hair, is the Setsuna that came with my real grade. Uh, this either came with the real grade or this came with the Dragon Momoko Exia that I ended up doing the Avalanche. But either way, it's either one 100 scale or it is uh, one 144 scale. But this one is more in scale with this guy, not this guy. Come on, Bandai. What were you guys thinking? This is actually quite amusing. But I'm actually glad to have him because, well, it's Setsuna. And I have a whole pile of him somewhere. Oh, but wait, you guys were like, yay, he's done. No. All right, so we have these pieces here. This is for the base. Um, this is going to be your main base piece. Your lighting system is going to go in here. The back is going to snap into here. And what I think is freaking genius is they turn the underside of this into storage space for all the things that you're not using. Uh, be it the hands, the GN swords, uh, the blades for the, um, the beam sabers. All of that stuff can be stored up underneath here. That way you're not keeping it in a baggie in a drawer somewhere for it to get lost. Next up we have XB and this is going to be a continuation and I like the fact that they didn't rehash the unicorn parts and they came up with a whole new lift system and I really like the mechanical look of this. Um, it really, really looks good to me. WC is going to be the back for the GN drive and then um, for when you have it out of Exia, and then these are gonna be, uh, I think attachments, be able to attach the GN drive to the base and just more parts for the arms and everything on the base. All right, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment down below. I am thinking about the possibility of doing a live stream build on this in sections. 
I actually have a new camera on order. Some of you people are like, Dave, you already have too many cameras. Yes, you're right. I do have too many cameras, but I actually ordered a camcorder um, to be able to do live stream because the problem is the camera that I end up using right here that you're looking at, woo, um, after about 20 minutes or so, it gets too hot, it heats up, and it shuts down. I love the Sony a6000. It gives me great pictures, but it overheats like nobody's business. Um, my Canon T3, which is up over there, uh, it will automatically shut off after about 15 minutes. So I want something where I can live stream for hours and have a nice, good picture. So I actually have a camcorder on order. That way I can still do uh, 60 frames, 1080p, and be able to stream to you guys both here or over on Twitch or on Facebook, wherever I choose to do so. Um, and do long videos for you guys and in high quality no jankiness here so if you guys want to see a live build of this um, definitely leave a comment down in the comment section if you guys just want me to build it and then do the review then I am perfectly fine doing that too but I would like to uh, possibly do like a couple hours every night just uh, sitting down with you guys, chit-chatting and doing a build on this. And, you know, having you guys enjoy my enjoyment because I am super stoked. This is, yeah, I'm super stoked on getting this and I can't wait to tear into it. But I'm going to wait to see what you guys think. And I'm done. So, now off for about two hours of editing all this video and footage together and uploading it. And uh, I will see you guys all in the next video. Next video actually should be uh, on the... Uh, I don't know I don't know I may just start digging into this and but I want to do the finish up the etching on the sniper um, and show you guys how to put that on and everything and get that out of the way let me know down in the, uh, down in the comment section I will see you guys all in the next video thanks for hanging out with me see you guys all later peace out YouTube